The Turkish armies are in retreat and General Allenby is in hot pursuit. He wants to destroy as much of the enemy as he can while he has the upper hand. He knows there is plenty of fight left in the Turks. They may be retreating, but they are not giving up. Instead of continuing his drive to the north, Allenby turns to the east, toward the holy city of Jerusalem. The symbolic history of that ancient city, sacred to Christians, Muslims, and Jews, is more important at the moment than another great victory against the Turks. Lloyd George has already told Allenby to take Jerusalem before Christmas. The religious significance is not lost on Christians among the British troops. Ford's tin lizzies plowed through the sand hills and raced along the coast tracks where Pharaoh's war chariots had traveled. A derelict tank lay in no man's land within rifle shot of where Samson's primitive weapon of the jawbone of an ass had proved more deadly. Well, you know, in some respects, it, it was a crusade. Uh, but Allenby is really sensitive about this because he doesn't want it to be called a crusade. A lot of his soldiers were Muslim. I mean, his labor force, uh, for example. He also had Indian troops. And so he doesn't want this sort of Christian versus Muslim conflict. And he just doesn't want to call that at all. But you couldn't help but be aware, if you were a British soldier, that you were going into Bethlehem or that you were getting closer to Jerusalem. And so even though Allenby doesn't want it really talked about as a crusade, you know, some of the rank and file uh, did think that way. And I think it, it was some motivation uh, for some of these, these British soldiers. On a night of rain and bitter cold, British forces attacked the holy city of Jerusalem on December 7, 1917. The enemy offers strong resistance at first, but they are only 15,000 men against overwhelming enemy numbers. They begin to withdraw from the city. Four centuries of Ottoman rule have come to an end. On December 11th, General Allenby enters Jerusalem on foot out of respect for the city. He is the 34th conqueror of Jerusalem in its long, volatile past. After a campaign that has lasted 40 days and 40 nights, with the loss of 18,000 men, the British soldiers have delivered a Christmas present to their nation. In the city, Allenby delivers a proclamation to the crowd and dignitaries gathered. Since your city is regarded with affection by the adherents of three of the great religions of mankind, and its soil has become consecrated by the prayers and pilgrimages of multitudes of devout people of those three religions for many centuries, therefore do I make it known to you that every sacred building, monument, holy spot, shrine, or customary place of prayer of whatsoever form of the three religions will be maintained and protected according to the existing customs and beliefs of those to whose faiths they are sacred. The Turks lose 25,000 men in the struggle that began October 31st. They are down but not out and still hold a strong defensive line from the Mediterranean to the Dead Sea. General Allenby's great victory has no effect on the bloodbath that continues on the Western Front. In fact, it looks as though the Germans might win the struggle. Generals Hindenburg and Ludendorff are planning a great offensive for the spring of 1918. They have many more divisions of troops to use against the British and French, brought in from the fight against Russia, where the revolution of 1917 has toppled the Tsarist government of Nicholas II. The Bolsheviks have taken over, led by Vladimir Lenin. He quickly signs treaties with Berlin and Istanbul that take his new communist state out of the war. So Germany is free to concentrate all its strength on the Western Front. In the United States, Congress declares war on Germany in April 1917. President Woodrow Wilson promises to send troops in the hundreds of thousands to help Britain and France but it takes time to train and organize this massive force and get them over to Europe. 
Lloyd George fears the Americans will not arrive in time to do any good against the impending German onslaught. So the Prime Minister tells General Allenby to send most of his army back to France. But uh, Lloyd George is also a great supporter of, of fighting in the, in, in the Middle East. And uh, he quarrels a lot with his generals about the allocation of resources uh, to these theaters. And he, he is determined by late 1917, 1918 that this is going to be the British theater. That he's just going to stay on the defensive in the West, basically wait for the American forces to build up in Europe. And he hoped even to substitute uh, American soldiers for British soldiers, which he was going to send to the Middle East. But uh, this was going to be his theater, but you know, the Germans wouldn't play that game. And so when they attack, suddenly the Western Front is once again, you know, first and foremost. The British offensive in Palestine is stopped cold, just when it is poised to capture Damascus and press on to Istanbul itself. Allenby can do nothing but watch his opportunity slip away and watch the Ottoman army use the time to prepare their defenses for the battles that lie ahead. Yes, the holy city of Jerusalem is in the Crusaders' hands, but peace still lies somewhere beyond its walls. <laughs>